What's up, gamers? Today, I'm back. It's been like a month. I know. Don't think I don't know, because I know. It's been like a month. Uh, exams have come and gone. I, I forgot for like a, a month that like school was hard. And so I've been doing school stuff. And then not school stuff, because I'm also really lazy and procrastinate a lot. But like, that's in the past. I don't have another exam for like... 15 days <laughs> um so i'm here and i'm making the thing that i alluded to in my last video like a month ago and that was the tier list for total drama characters i think and we're making a seasons tier list and i'm gonna i'm gonna warn you right now this is gonna be a long one as you can see we have s a b c f you know the standard and we're just gonna start it off total drama Rams f tier because uh, i have no idea i haven't watched it don't plan to never will not my thing. If it is somebody else's thing, that's a little weird. But, like, I, I will respect it nonetheless. This will be a long video. I tried recording this video, like, two weeks ago. And then I just stopped recording it because I was, like, I don't know. I was in the middle of recording it. I had to pause a lot. I was sick at the time. Um, and then I just stopped it. Like, I was in the middle of recording. I had to pause a good couple times. And then, like... Uh, I had to go out for a little bit, and then by the time I got back, I was like, this just isn't worth it. Um, and I remember I was talking about World Tour at the time that I got back, and I was like, oh man, like at that when I was recording it, I was like, oh man, how am I ever going to remember what I was talking about? I was like, oh, I'll leave a note for myself, so when I get back, I can record it. And the note was one sentence, and was literally some of the least descriptive stuff I have... <sighs> anyway, so we're gonna rank every season on this tier list, S to F. Um, I didn't include a D, I think last time I did, but like this one I think will just be roughly about what I think of each season. Um, it's going to be a long one, so buckle up, turn on, turn, keep it like a podcast. Just imagine this is like a podcast, you know, with a tier list in the background. So first, also this is completely unscripted if you couldn't tell, so uh, it's really going to go long because I like to ramble. So first we're gonna we're gonna put Total Drama Island to S tier. And I, I don't think anybody should be surprised. And while I debate back and forth whether this season is my favorite or not, I think that its impact and just everything about it needs to be appreciated in full form. Total Drama Island was the original and it could easily be considered the best. It just had such a neat, concise formula. It was simple. And I think that's where the best parts are, is that like, you, you got introduced to so many new characters immediately. But you had 23 minutes, 26 episodes, to meet them, to learn them, to know who they are, to like them, love them, hate them. While in the backdrop were challenges. This, this season was immensely character-focused. The challenges were simple enough to where characters were at the forefront, interactions were at the forefront. Like, just to take some of the examples of some challenges, you have dodgeball, you have, like, army training, or, like, army training, you have, like, a cooking challenge, you had hide-and-go-seek, you had, like, treasure hunting. Like, you had very simple challenges to where, and even, like, some of the less simple ones... Like uh, Triarm Triathlon, and um, the the one the one where they all got lost and got like sent away from camp. Even those ones were like either the challenge was at the forefront, but they're not simple, or where there wasn't really a challenge, which is getting back to camp. It was really character focused, and I think that's where it succeeded the most. Was that they created all of these likable characters, and they gave such a wide open platform to be able to appreciate these characters. And I think that is also one of its biggest strengths. Like, besides, two of its biggest strengths are the characters itself, once you, like, whittle down some of the, some of the placeholders, because, you know, somebody, no, somebody does need to get out first. Um, once you whittle down some of the placeholder characters, and then the challenges themselves. Simple challenges are the way to go, at least, especially in this type of setting where it's just at summer camp. Again, you got, like, dodgeball. You got... I, it's very simple challenges 
And I think it works. It works perfectly. Nobody's doing anything too crazy because it's fucking dodgeball. It's dodgeball. It's trying to see how long people can stay up at night. Like, it's good. It's simple stuff. You have nice, interesting characters. I'd say as soon as, like, Sadie. No. Sadie or Katie. The, the second one of those two to get eliminated, you have good, like, you're down to the best characters you got. Because you have nice, interesting interactions between all of them. You have Duncan and Courtney being a thing. You have the boys. The boys as a whole, I'm going to touch on it a little bit. And, like, that's also going to be a big thing of praise. You have those interactions. You have Harold and Lashana, Harold and Duncan's own, like, Harold, Duncan, and Jeff having their own interactions. And you have, like, Owen and Gwen interacting with Trent. And, like, it's... Mm, those character interactions are crucial and they're key and they're awesome. Um, a big overarching success was just making it having a lot of leisure time, having time, like having almost every episode begin in the mess hall where they're just talking or having some episodes, I believe began with like them playing Frisbee or something or like in the, the, uh, the scary movie episode, they like, they were just watching a scary movie together. Like, uh, it it made it seem like they were forced to be there. So, like, they might as well be friends. And it felt really good. And it felt very fitting. And it felt very connected. And I think it cultivated a lot of relationships slowly and nicely. You see Duncan in the first episode. Dick. Dick to Noah. Dick to anybody. He's calling all the girls hot. You know how it is. But then you start seeing them and the guys interact more when they get put on the team. And then like him and Jeff, him and DJ. And then you start slowly seeing it get like starting to see clicks form very slowly. And then by the brunch of disgustingness, you have it because it's forced to be guys versus girls. And you have the click. Trent, DJ, Jeff, Owen, Duncan. The click of dudes. The bros, per se. The boys, per se. It could be the boys. That's the boys. And it felt real. It felt real to me, at least. Like when I was watching it, like Jeff and DJ were some of the boys. Owen and Duncan and Owen and Jeff interactions, great. Because first off, Owen's a great character. And I'll touch on him winning in a second. Spoiler alert, whatever the fuck. It's like, ten, it's like 14 years old at this point. Um, <laughs> excuse me. Gotta get some water. It's like that. The boys specifically was such a great creation. And like it really, like the guys Alliance talked about in Hide and Seek, I think was really smart also. And it showed like, there's a conversation of like who the, the, uh, the secondary antagonist to Toll Drama Island is because like most people say like every season has a primary antagonist for like the later seat, like later part of the season. And then they need a early antagonist. And the debate is between if the early antagonist is Lindsay or Duncan. Lindsay because she follows around Heather and does everything she says, or Duncan because he's Duncan. I think the early antagonist, going all the way to the end because he gets eliminated one episode before Heather does, the early antagonist is Duncan. And you start to see him go from like just the dick when he's like bullying Harold and everything. You start to see him recognize it and he says in the hide and seek episode basically he's like if i can notice this then somebody definitely can if they can notice that there's more girls than guys or if i can then they can i liked seeing his little strategic side as well i think a lot of the relationships i mean like as i don't even remember the original point for that the the, the hide and seek episode i think was really good i'm um, kind of showing that like heather and um Lindsay, like there's just an obvious bridge of mistreatment that had like it's culminating uh, like it's gonna burst soon duncan making the guys alliance like making his first like political quotes move by eliminating bridget him and the by the guys alliance and then it goes right into i believe maybe i don't completely remember even though i watched this season or these shows enough i think by the time it gets to the um seek and ye shall find um it's established like bridget's gone and then in the seek and they shall find when lashana passes all the information out you can see that i i liked that i really liked that everybody on the island respected each other enough roughly to when told that 
Heather kissed Trent. Everybody fell for that, and everybody attacked that. And it was the same thing when Lindsay got eliminated, and Heather was telling about another friend, Duncan, and everybody else was recognizing that that wasn't cool. And I felt like there was some that's something that was missed in the generation two and three was that just the overall camaraderie. Like you didn't have to be best friends with somebody. Like Duncan and Lindsay probably had an, a handful of interactions like by themselves, like just them two. But when they were eliminated, or when she got eliminated and Heather was doing it out, yeah, Duncan stuck up for her and everybody did. And I think overall this season's probably the most well-rounded. But I will say it has a little bit of pro- it has some problems. And the, I think the main problem is just solely excuse me, the the main problem is just solely there's a lot of placeholder characters. And I'm going to try to, like, think about it non-biasedly because I do have strong opinions about all these characters. Zeke being eliminated first episode instead of saying, Courtney had a lot of plot armor to get to where she was, which wasn't even far. She literally got nowhere, but was still, like, or she didn't even get to the merge, but she still had a lot of plot armor. Ezekiel and Tyler getting voted out before her, excuse me, made a little sense. Well, Ezekiel made sense because, you know, misogynist, uh, and that's not cool. But Tyler getting out makes genuinely no sense because he was an athlete, and Courtney was just a CIT, or as Heather said, a BITC. Um, oh, God. <laughs> excuse me. Um... But Ezekiel getting eliminated was, like, somewhat valid. Ava getting eliminated was also somewhat valid, but I don't know why she was mad at Bridget, specifically when they, when she came back. Um, Noah getting out, sad, but valid. Like, they had to have certain burner characters, and they just didn't elaborate on those characters enough because they were getting eliminated. And why waste episodes of character development on characters like Justin, who had, like, I think a YouTuber pointed out, like, four lines in the first four episodes... Why waste, why waste development on him when you could develop Gwen and Trent more or develop you know, Gwen and Heather's rivalry more? And it's like, I understand it, and it's definitely not a big knock, but it is still something to keep in mind. Um, but again, there's just nothing I can praise more than having like those interactions like Bridget and Lashana and Gwen sticking together. They were awesome together. Um, Heather, as an antagonist, incredible genuinely incredible and i think that only matched by alejandro maybe actually no he she is only matched by alejandro um her antagonistic role was incredible and i think no matter how you look at the lens maybe you could or if you look at the season through the lens of like they wasted a lot of characters some of the challenges were kind of lame because they were simple this that and the other no matter what lens you look at this season through i think it has to be an s tier season like no doubt about it Hmm. Excuse me, which brings me to Toll Drama Action. I'm going to put it in this, an A tier. Toll Drama Action, I think, lives up to its name quite well. Toll Drama Action had a lot in it. Toll Drama Action, in my opinion, was the season of character development. Just because it... For better or worse, it was the season of character development. Because it changed a lot of characters. And it changed a lot of interactions. I think let's start with some positives. Um, the movie set idea. Having each challenge and each, like, each thing be based off of a movie. Great idea, I'd say. Great idea. Using a different set of scenery. Because, you know, an island can only take you so far before you have to put nuclear waste in it. Having a movie set and doing each different challenge based off of a movie and like th- that kind of interaction was great. I think that was a really creative idea. I think most of the challenges relatively worked. I'd say there were some that were a little bit lacking here and there. Um, like the Animal Buddy movie or the Animal Buddy one. I kind of I didn't like that episode a ton. Um but like, it's like most of them, I would say, were generally speaking, the challenges were a hit. Um, and then I would say the the cast selection was interesting. I know they selected it based off of um, the people in the water at the end of Toll Drama 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 Island, um, which was a great episode, by the way. I love that so much, and it gave a lot more 
uh, development to some characters like Justin, which led to his expanded role in action. And we'll get to that. But I think the cast was a weird, like a weird gaggle of people, you know, like it had like Beth and it had Justin. And then it had like all of these hard hitting people like that survived long time in Total Drama Island. But it didn't include any of the other, like, lower cast members like Tyler or Zeke or Ava or um, uh, Cody. And, like, I know some of those will be included more in Total World Tour. And they will be handled better, in my opinion. Uh, well, to an extent. Doesn't matter. We'll, we'll get there when we get there. Um, I will say immediately, 13 cast members, 26 episodes. 13 or 12 cast members, 36, uh, 26 episodes. Um. I think it might have been 12, not including Courtney. I don't know. Courtney and then Izzy came back. Um, I really, I find it hilarious, like, the, just the trope, at least through the first, the, 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 yeah, I guess the trope of Izzy coming back in each season until World Tour. I thought it was, I enjoyed it. It's funny. She's funny. Mm. Excuse me. Um, so we'll start. Actions, challenges were all great. Um. Jeff and Bridget getting eliminated the first episode. I really don't like what they did with Jeff um, throughout the season. I guess we'll go into a negative already just because I thought of it. Like, Jeff, I feel like he could have used more depth, but he, it could have been more emotional depth versus him just being a jackass or, like, yeah, just him being, like, a, a TV hosting dick the whole time. I feel like he really could have used some other type of emotional development than just being a dick. Um... And also, like, making Bridget go through that when they were such, like, an adorable couple really kind of sucks. I like I would have liked, I like him in season three more where he's a more passive host of Aftermath. Also, like, season two's Aftermath, in my opinion, is really annoying. Half because of Jeff and Jeff and just half because, like, I don't know. I'm not a huge fan of the idea in general. Like, I, I like the idea, but I'm just not a huge fan of, I guess, execution. But Jeff and Bridget, I think, were some real low lights. And so they got uh, they got eliminated early. This is the only season that uh, people picked teams, which uh, already a red flag. <laughs> um, and then both of the team leaders get voted out like within four episodes of them drafting a team. It was really in no good. I didn't like that decision at all. Like Gwen and Gwen made it to the final two. Trent made it past the merge. Like they're both strong players, and they both got eliminated very early on. Um, Trent, I, I, you know what, because there's a lot of positives I could say, like, I really, thank God Duncan was a finalist this season, um, he really got, he really bullshitted his way to the end, he got some, he had some plot armor too, like Lindsay voting for himself, or for herself, um, and, like, Owen getting voted out, well, I mean, this was just randomly, but, like, Owen getting voted out because everybody else voted for Courtney, like, I, there was a lot of interesting votes this season. Like, last season had Harold's moment, which is one of the best moments of the entire, I think, the entire shows. Is Harold standing up to his, um, this is in Ireland, so we're backtracking a little bit. But Harold standing up to his bully, voting out his love interest, like, perfect. That is a Oscar, Oscar moment right there. Perfection. And to see Harold get more development's great. And we'll get on that later. But this this season had a lot of interesting voting things that happened. Like Lindsay voting for herself. Duncan voting off Courtney. Both, well, Lindsay not paying attention. Duncan being asleep. I mean, even though in the confessional, he kind of insinuated that it was on purpose. I don't know. And then Owen getting voted out because everybody else voted for Courtney when he specifically said he couldn't. Or they couldn't. Um, which, I don't know. I felt that was weird. And the amount of reward challenges I felt was a lot. It was, it was very overbearing. Um, and knowing the formula of like elimination, reward, elimination, reward, it was a surprise that more people didn't treat it like Duncan and Lashana treated the medical episode where they just kind of half-assed it or didn't do any of the work. I feel like it would have been a really interesting thing if they half-assed a reward challenge and Chris got so mad that he turned it into an elimination challenge or vice versa. I feel like that's kind of a good thing is like that they could have done that on a whim if they wanted to because they had a lot of episode flexibility. But I also get like you don't want to go too many episodes in a row um, without a voting off and you also kind of want to um, keep a schedule going 
But I also think they could have maybe, besides like sprinkling in Courtney and like Izzy again, or Izzy coming back, they could have experimented more with bringing more characters back, like if they wanted to. Also, there's an ad that just popped up. Uh, whatever, doesn't matter, don't care. We're, we're not getting ready to rank the next place yet. Um, I feel like there, there, there's a lot of flexibility with a smaller cast, but still like the 16, uh, but 26 episodes. I think there's a lot that they could have done, and I think that like doing elimination reward, elimination reward was a little bit safe, but fine, I it, it was fine, and it still helped cultivate a lot of good re, uh, interactions. Hmm. Excuse me, now get some of the highlights and lowlights, and I'm going to say the, the highlights and the dialights of this season at the same time. It's the character development. They chose a oddly specific group of characters to develop to the extreme, and it worked or it didn't, and it was really, like, jarring how, like, drastic some of this development could be, whether it was really good or really bad. Some of the best development happened to characters we I personally didn't give a fuck about. Justin and Beth. Beth was a finalist. Justin was an antagonist. Who would have thought, watching the first season, that Justin would have been an antagonist? I think it was a great idea. It's somebody completely different from Heather. Well, Heather was manipulating people to do her... Well, it's two sides of the same coin. Heather was intellectually manipulating these people to do what they want and then justin was physically manipulating them he was manipulating th them through his beautiful good looks rather than his big brain and i even liked personally although i would have preferred him be the antagonist of the whole season him or like then transition to duncan rather than uh introduce courtney because i think courtney in this season was a bitch but we're gonna get to that later in the character development section um but Justin was great. I really liked Justin. I think his manipulation of Beth and Lindsay, I think that could have gone farther. I liked that he black excuse me, that he blackmailed Gwen into throwing challenges because Trent had been throwing challenges. I, that doesn't really like make sense considering they were on different teams, but like I I don't know. Like I think maybe like he could have gone to Chris about it or something. I don't know. I I, I believed it. I thought it was great. And then I liked when Courtney came back near the end of his run. He like he started to try to use his brain too. He was like, "Well, these these girls kind of don't find me as attractive anymore." Like, I guess I'm gonna have to start like being strategic, and I liked that. I actually would have preferred if he won the fairy tale challenge instead of letting Courtney win, and that's the episode he got voted off on. He got voted off on because he did he. He became a simp. He became the very thing he swore to destroy. He was manipulating people with his body, and then he got manipulated, which, uh, fair enough, like, downfall. A, st a stellar downfall. I would have, I think, been okay with, in general, swapping where he was eliminated and where Heather was, or not Heather, Harold was eliminated. Because I think Justin could have gone farther because he could have, I think Lindsay was eliminated sixth, and he could have, like, manipulated them and then he could have as like his final act of villainy eliminated Lindsay and then like it, they could have in the in the further episodes eliminated Harold or eliminated him however though it doesn't matter set in stone already but I I wish in the fairy tale challenge that he won because he did exactly what it was is that he pitted Duncan and Harold against each other which obviously did not need much <laughs> did not need much work to do um and then used his brain, betrayed Harold immediately, and then he got to Courtney. And I think it could have been easy if he just fucking threw her off that tower and was like, I win, I'm invincible. And then voted off Harold because I know for a fact Duncan would have wanted to vote off Harold and Courtney, I don't know, Courtney doesn't like Harold at all either. Um, and then Beth, Beth made it to be a finalist. A weird one, and probably not one I would have, like, preferred. Like, I saw a lot of rumors about, like, talking about, um, the rumors of Lindsay being a finalist. And that would have been really cool. I would have preferred that. Lindsay is a great... I thought Lindsay was a good character. And her character development helped, too. Her character development got her taking charge, such as, like, in Admiral Lindsay, her hotness. And it also just got her thinking more and, like, being a bigger-brained person. And I think that was really good, too, actually. I thought that, like, set of development was good. Um, 
and Beth being, I think it was more like, to me, it felt like Beth was Lindsay's sidekick versus Lindsay being Beth's sidekick. But Beth made it farther, and Beth and tried to like manipulate Courtney, which was cool, I guess. Like, and I don't know, Beth was cool. They did some good things with her. They did some good things with Lindsay. And they had some really good things with Harold. I think I liked how Harold had a mind of his own, and he had challenges where he truly showed that he was awesome. Um, like he has good dancing skills. He was able to pick the lock and save everybody. He did good in the fighting challenge and won uh, the reward. Um, and that was cool. I think that like. Harold and Duncan shouldn't have been friends, but they should have had like a more mutual, um, should have a more mutual respect for each other than um, it just had, it just lasting one episode. But we're here to talk about the bad things too, and the bad side of the character development. I would say there's a decently long list: Gwen, Trent, uh, Lashana, Owen. Um, just for starters, those four. Gwen and Trent, their relationship was handled very, very horribly, and I don't think that anybody would disagree. Um, they turned Trent from a suave, awesome man to um, a weirdo, a really weird person. And I think it just goes against everything we know and what Gwen liked about Trent. Like that's what like they're trying to, I guess, make like us like be like, yeah, Gwen should have broken up with him. But with that, like, I don't. It was not the way to go about it. I think, first off, both of them shouldn't have been eliminated as early as they were, truth be told. I think both of them should have stayed, and, like, they should have stayed long enough to where, like, we saw a a friendship cultivating between Gwen and Duncan, and we saw the jealousy, and we saw everything kind of in front of our eyes and not just happen at light speed. I, I think that was a really weird and poor choice to make by the, the creators. And so Trent getting voted off... Um, and broken up with, I feel like it was just, it was such a bad, it ruined the character. And like in world tour, like he didn't come back. And I feel like either that would have been a good thing, a good way to rectify things and like get him into like being a normal competitor. Who's just like an audience sub, like an audience, um, body because he's normal compared to everybody else. Or it could have been something to rectify, like no way to rectify things with Gwen or anything, but they just kind of ruined his character and tossed him away, which sucks. Gwen, this starts her downfall arc. I'm a, I'm a big fan of Go, uh, Gwen and Duncan, at least a little bit aesthetic wise, but like this was not the way to go about it. And it was really just really bad. And I'm glad that like after watching like her breakup, I was really glad she was gone at that point. Um, They really also wanted us to hate Lashana in this season, which was really interesting considering how I felt most people thought she was a fan favorite in Island because she was. She was really cool. She had a great character in Island. She was everybody, like, she was a real one. She was friends with Gwen and Bridget, and, like, she made friends with Duncan in the end. Like, she was a baller. We love Lashana. But they made, they, they just kept trying over and over to make us hate her, like, with the fake crying, and then with releasing what she said on the, um, on, uh, Courtney's PDA, they really wanted to make us hate her, and I feel like that was just a really weird direction to go, like, her shit talking to all of her friends, like, wow, that is valid, and while people do that, and while I'm not gonna, st I hope I see nobody arguing that people don't do that, I just don't understand, like, um, I don't understand, like, where the, where the desire was to, to do this, to make her, like, not even antagonistic, just kind of a dick, I don't get it, um, the last one was Owen, Owen, I feel like overstayed his welcome very quickly, I think when he got floated off, um, it was sad, I, it was un- lawful i think i kind of would have found it funny if courtney sued her way in to immediately get eliminated like that would have been fucking hilarious to me like a haha -ha, like the you know, wrongful termination this you bitch but um owen getting eliminated there i think would have been perfectly fine and then not coming back at all <laughs> like that's just it i think it would have been perfectly fine if he did not come back because i feel like his job was stupid Excuse me, his job of sabotage could be done by any of Chris's interns. It could have been done by Chris itself. Could have been done by Chef, like when Chef was sabotaging when he was Pythonicus. Literally could have been done by anybody, but they chose to make Owen come back, the lovable goofball, the one that everybody knows and loves and trusts, and they made him sabotage for like no reason. I didn't I didn't like that. 
overall action was really good. Uh, it grew on me a lot. I'd say when I was younger, I would have probably put it in B tier, um, but it grew on me. I think I, I really enjoyed it, and I really appreciated what it did for characters like Justin. Justin was a compelling antagonist to me. I found I found the way he played the game really nice. Like when in his, it was this one confessional, where like he's got he got Gwen, uh, Beth's friendship racially. He's like, yeah, Gwen, yeah, or like Beth's, like, yeah, Beth. These this friendship bracelet's great. You know, it would also be great forming an alliance. Like that kind of shit was nice. I enjoyed it, and it gave him some depth. Mm. <coughs> Excuse me. And now we've hit the 30 minute mark, but don't worry, we're about, after I talk about World Tour, we're going to slow down a little bit, because this is where I, have the later shows where I get less passionate about it. World Tour is S tier. Like, there's no way you can say World Tour is not S tier. World Tour has some shaky things in it, I will admit, but I, I the, the backdrop, going around the world, awesome, doing around the world related challenges, great, being a fucking musical amazing all star that's a great idea the cast returning i would say it's a better cast than um actions because it brought back just everybody we love it brought back owen gwen duncan heather uh noah brought back or it brought noah back brought cody tyler it brought back some new characters who did not get much love like noah cody tyler as well as I brought two new characters into the fold, which are, are probably going to be my first two talking points. Like overall, this season I think had the highest highs. the the epi The good episodes in World Tour were great episodes. They had a lot to go for it. A, like in World Tour, a good song fucking killed. Like made the episode so much better. And it had good plot lines too. I thought that overall. World Tour probably, again, had the highest highs, but, like, most of the time when you say that, you also expect it to have the lowest lows. And in the in the, the first three seasons, I'd say the lowest lows definitely were not World Tours. I think World Tours... World Tour had probably the highest highs and some of the highest lows. Like, I think some of the lows of World Tour aren't half as bad as the lows of Action or even Island. Let's start with talking about the highest high of World Tour, I would say, besides the banger songs... Is Alejandro. Alejandro Burro Muertos. Alejandro is one of the greatest characters in total drama. He is Justin plus Heather. It's as simple as that. His character, like, that's why Justin didn't come back for World Tour, in my opinion, is that they had this idea for a mastermind manipulator, but they already used Justin and they already showed that Justin could be ignored and that Justin wasn't like suave with his words. Justin was just hot and so they kind of scrapped just i think they tossed justin's character to the side and brought in alejandro alejandro or al is the best total drama villain it's just that simple the plan is simple it is just that simple alejandro is the best villain alejandro was responsible for the most eliminations by a single person in total drama history he, in almost every single elimination, was either the main cause or a secondary cause, such as convincing people to vote. He went through a lot of the show with nobody knowing or nobody recognizing until he got voted off, and that was his thing. Heather and Island, people hated Heather probably most after the merge, just because of after what happened with Trent. Alejandro eliminated, like, Bridget. And, like, mm, he eliminated a lot of people. And, like, even the people who recognized that he was a bad person, like Noah, he immediately voted off for it. Which, by the way, we're getting into that. That was some horse shit that, that, team, that their team even lost. Um, Alejandro, a mastermind. It is incredible. His character was incredible. I really liked his manipulation of everybody and him doing it somewhat different ways. Or I liked when he got frustrated. I liked seeing the little moments when like he was still known to be the good guy. Um, I liked the moments where his facade dropped. Like when they got back after I see London and he looked at Noah with a dead glare and like he was really pissed off. And he was like, I'm glad to see some were concerned. And like him being angry at Noah and like that shit. 
when he was still considered the good guy, like by the rest of the crew, that shit was golden. And then as they go on, mm, excuse me, as they go on, his voice becoming more auto tuned because he's becoming more villainous. Mm, great narrative speaking there. His manipulation of Courtney with Duncan. First off, that was brutal. Like Duncan cheats on her, kinda. And then immediately goes into manipulating her to get her voted off. Fucking brutal. But, like, that's still cool. That's a great idea. Like, Alejandro to the end. and mm, He did great. Him making it to the final three, I think, was one of the most deserving performances. Because I could think, like, he said it, like, the second episode. His team was awful. He would, like, his team, he needed all the help he could get. And the thing is, besides like manipulating the team, he was also the main reason that they were winning, yeah, if at all. Like he made, he played a big contribution in most of the games or most of the challenges. So him making it very far until the merge, and then even post merge, like in Ni Niagara Falls, him well, him like winning kind of with Heather. He didn't win the challenge, obviously, but him with Heather, he didn't do anything to get voted off. He was following like what blainly like he was very workable he he was very flexible to what everybody wanted and he kept himself low enough like his manipulation was low key enough to not make himself a target which i think was different than um heather or even like justin a little bit um the other character was sierra i put her i think in c tier um on my tier list uh, Sierra to me is a really conflicting character because I don't I obviously her entire design is problematic and like that's the point is that she's the fangirl stereotype and like I get it and she does like she's great she's entertaining and like I'm gonna look at this like to to look at her character at all you have to look at it through the non real life lens because like this is shit's unacceptable in real life obviously you don't even have, you shouldn't even have to say that it's unacceptable um. I will say that I really, I liked her, I started liking her character more near the end of the show. Like, actually, that's completely wrong. I liked her character kind of, like, at, like in the middle of the show, kind of. And then we got to China, Chinese Fake Out. Um, and Chinese Fake Out, I think, is where she really started to fall off. Give me a second. Like, Sierra in the mid-episodes... I feel almost, almost gets, a, like, tolerable. And then as soon as Chinese fake out happens, where she drugs Cody, who, a, a, a character is already considered a floater, she drugs Cody, makes him completely ineligible to play in the Serengeti. I... <laughs> I don't know, man. Like, I, I, I can suspend those thoughts long enough, but, like, that's annoying. But then, like, she does, like, other nice, like, really nice, like, good-hearted things. Like, she makes Cody a birthday cake. And, like, while that blew up the fucking plane, like, it still was really adorable. And she wanted to accompany him. Or, and, like, she was a nice travel companion and helped him make it to Hawaii in the first place with the, the fireworks idea. Like... It's, she's a really mixed bag, and I, I think she was still a good addition to the show. I just don't know, truthfully, I don't know. But let's talk about some of the other good additions to the show, or re-additions. Excuse me, Noah and Tyler. I specifically like them two a lot. I feel like them both being on the same team, them both... They're kind of opposite characters in a way. Noah's, you know, smart, quippy, and Tyler's stupid and, like, goofy. And, I don't know, I enjoy Tyler a lot. I also love Noah. I think them being on the same team was really good. Alongside Owen, like, uh, Noah and Owen having a great friendship. I think that's amazing. Noah having all of his one-liners is great. Tyler is just funny. I enjoy Tyler a lot. Him kissing a cod is great. I like, I like him seeing Duncan and Gwen kiss. I feel like it, 
it was a nice final way to give him relevancy. Like I think Noah and Tyler, after not being relevant all at all in the first season, they both got they also they both got character development moments. You know, Noah becoming more like you know surviving longer, participating in the challenges, being smart, being funny, getting really attached and like good friendship with Owen. Tyler be getting a good friendship with Alejandro, and. They both get useful parts. Noah's the first one to really actively speak out against Alejandro while they were still there, saying he's telling another contestant, sadly it just had to be Owen, but telling Owen he's an eel dipped in grease swimming in motor oil. And then Tyler, that that was not Noah's impact. Noah got an important part, which was he was the first one to call out Alejandro for being evil. He even left he even when he was getting eliminated say beware of eels and like if owen was any any level of intelligence <laughs> he would have understood that and i think that kind of, he kind of forced alejandro's hand of like we need to like kick our like the plan of getting people who aren't his subordinates kick them off quickly such as kicking off duncan in the x or trying to kick off duncan in the x or in uh after greece um which I still felt was kind of weird because I feel like Owen or Duncan could have definitely swung that vote into a tie break scenario of like, because Duncan didn't get a medal, Alejandro didn't get a medal. So it definitely could have been like a Duncan Owen versus Tyler Alejandro vote. But it might have seen like, I guess Al had too much trust or Owen had too much trust in Al uh, and voted for him in Greece. I voted against, voted for Duncan in Greece. But I'd like, the show, as well as giving them their own character development, gave them, like, crucial story moments, such as noticing Al is evil and um, calling out Gwen and Duncan's kiss, which affected a lot. It was the reason that Tyler got voted off. It was the reason Gwen got voted off. It was the reason why like, the Amazon kept throw, or trying to throw challenges. Um, I think... Th that whole thing was a lot i don't it was not done greatly i think it, it that was just like part of um what happened in action like what happened in action like it didn't help because like they had kind of ruined duncan and courtney's relationship by courtney being a bossy little bitch which i didn't even really cover actually talking about action but oh well we that's how i felt she was a bitch i really did not like courtney in action um, and then Gwen and Trent ending so, like, abruptly. It set up for this, I agree. I can acknowledge that it set up for this really, like, smoothly. But, like, I don't, I don't particularly like it. Or no, I like it, but I don't. And I don't like that Courtney tried to throw challenges. And I didn't like, uh, Gwen getting eliminated in Australia. Um. But I think overall it was like fine for this series. All Stars made it fucking awful, but I think it was fine. And I think some of the earlier challenges were, I'd say, a little weaker, such as um, Can't Help Falling in Louvre, and um, you know, early the early set. Like I wouldn't even say pre. -mar I'd say like pre team victory or post team victory challenges were very good because I think that some of the challenges had to be really weirdly set up to have any team win um, because they added a third team in world tour. And I think that was a bad decision. I think they had enough contestants to where two teams could work like, some, like settling in some um, reward challenges along the way. But I feel like what they did with three teams was just have like, for example, uh, team Chris is really, really, really hot. It's they didn't win. It was they were in not win or not total loser purgatory to where they didn't eliminate a single contestant for like a decent amount of episodes, um, which was kind of annoying. I think that was kind of annoying. And having Team Victory, I mean, Team Victory had a lot of like fan favorite characters, like not even fan favorite, just like likable characters like Lashana and Bridget, and DJ, and Lindsay, and all of them, like, I think after, like, the second, like, after Harold and Bridget got eliminated, you could kind of catch on what they were doing, was that, like, 
it was the guise of like three teams, but they just are going to use like team victory as like a joke to like eliminate as many people as they wanted. And eventually having DJ get eliminated in Jamaica, which I kind of felt was weird. Like in season one, they took the stance of like Duncan and Owen not completing the bike race as like him, like them not even like, I don't know. They didn't complete it and then get voted off. And then Duncan didn't complete the, or, and then DJ didn't complete the bobsled race and got eliminated. I felt that was weird, but I guess they needed him to leave, which I guess was fine. Um, team victory was kind of whack, but I think as soon as team victory was gone, starting with IC London, whole drama or world tour hit a, like hit a, hit the fucking ground sprinting even like they were already sprinting and then they kicked it into overdrive like they those next couple episodes of like i see london greece's pieces x files are incredible to me i think like that until like even like i like the addition of blainly i feel like it's a different like she's a different energy than the rest of like the teenagers or, or anybody who could have been added back I think her couple episodes were short, and I didn't love her. I don't love her as a character, but I think that her impact was interesting, and, like, her trying to get Chef into another alliance, and, like, her just not taking any contestant, like, any shit at all was really funny. Um, I will say, well, Chinese, t- well, Chinese uh, Fake Out isn't a great episode. That one moment where, like, Chris kept on getting the phone calls, and then there's, like, why does Blaine Lee have normal food? And, like, why is why is Alejandro keep dropping his hair tie? And why is Courtney keep chewing her chud or her cut over here? And why does Blaine Lee have normal food? Like, I felt like that was a really funny episode. And Chris was like, all right, fucking d- d- shut up. Um, and I got to both Blaine Lee and Courtney being eliminated in that episode, I believe, which again, that was funny. Um, the season's really funny. I would say as like, Noah has a lot of good one liners. Um, and I think overall, it's pretty funny, sh- uh, pretty funny season. Um, pretty, I mean, amazing soundtrack. The three songwriters for World Tour or for the songs of World Tour were incredible. Um, and overall, this is definitely an S tier season. Now, at forty seven minutes, we're gonna go to the fourth season, which is Revenge of the Island. Revenge of the Island gets a B tier. It's pretty good. I'd say, again, if I was rating this a couple years ago, this probably would have gone in a C tier. But through, like, reviewings, I would say that's pretty good. Um, the concept is really wacky. Um, and this is when the show really started. Like, going from less of, like, a parody to, like, a full-on, like, I would say this is a different show, almost. Um, the radioactivity, the new cast, like, I'd say, like, this is a, the, the second, like, the second generation is the second era of total drama. I think this is not a great season, but I, I'd say it's acceptable. I'd say it's pretty good, and I'd say some of the later episodes are, are enjoyable. Um, some of, like, the characters, to me, are really hit or miss. Like, you got characters like Scott and Lightning, and I'd say even Zoe and, like, Dawn, and I like Sam. Like, those characters are pretty good. I'd say those are enjoyable characters. And then you have, like, Mike and Cameron. I don't love Cameron that much at all. Uh, And, like, uh, B. Like, B is interesting, I guess. And then you have, like, your middle ground characters, like Brick, who is, like, fine, I guess. Like, I don't know. A lot of this season, to me, was just kind of, like, fine, I guess. Like, the first couple episodes, you got... Like, I like the first couple episodes specifically setting up Scott. Scott is a great villain. I love Scott as an antagonistic role. His... His way of doing things is completely different than the first three seasons' villains. And it kind of, like, the only time we've ever seen it is, like, with Courtney. And then, I guess, like, with Gwen in action. But there, he is... His method is throwing challenges. His method is being useful in the challenge, but losing so that he can vote off someone else. And he's picking off his own team. I think it's a really interesting... Me- it's a really neat methodology. You're just kicking off your own team, so you survive till the merge, and then you realize that you're just better than everyone. And that was interesting to me. I thought that was a neat way to go about having a new antagonist. 
And I think it was really culminated in how quickly he recognized B is smart and an inventor, but B does not speak. So B is easy to <laughs> B was easy to eliminate. And then I liked he didn't know I liked how he didn't ah uh, I liked how he didn't know who to pin uh, stealing stuff on, so he pinned it on Dawn. Because Dawn started start Dawn found out or like put the connections together that um he was shooting shit. And that's also Dawn and Scott is one of my favorite crack ships. I find that really funny of a concept. And I like it. I think that they would be adorable. Like when she goes that when she was like, You weren't held enough as a child. Like I, I like that. There's like the one moment. I'm like, okay, that's adorable. But Scott's a great villain. Scott's a great antagonist. Lightning, when he gets like competitive, I wouldn't even call him antagonistic, but I would say that when he gets like competitive, when he gets to the merge, I like Lightning a lot. I kind of like thought of it in a way of like Lightning had no allies. Like Scott, at least like blackmailed his way which also i really enjoyed was that like it wasn't even like manipulating it was straight up blackmail he blackmailed a man's mental disorder to get what he wanted um and then voted him off that hold on grand chef auto as an episode i think might be my favorite in the season it was a really good episode i think it was nice to see joe and lightning's alliance fall apart and then like Mike and Zoe's relationship kind of fall apart while Scott's using Mike. I thought that was a really nice touch to show that like all alliances are failing. Lightning star like starts his vendetta against Joe. Zoe's not pleased with Mike at all. And then as soon as it starts to get repaired and like we're thinking, oh man, Lightning won, like Joe's out of here. Chris comes in and was like, hey, Scott actually won. And then Mike gets all off. I feel like that was a really nice touch. He manipulated Mike, won the challenge, and then directly voted him off. Like I thought that was perfect. I, I think that was probably the best episode of the season to me. Um, <sighs> what was I saying? Lightning, when like lightning post merge had no teammates, and when he was on a team, he was the team. Like, I don't know. Like, I, I thought that it was neat to, like, have a lone wolf. And then the one alliance he did make with Joe, the bo the dude's packed. <laughs> Which, I know, like, that was probably my favorite whole bit of the show besides that. And, like, Fang. I liked Fang a lot, too. Um, Was just Lightning calling Joe a dude over and over again. Um, And then his reaction when Joe was like, you're stupid. You didn't even know I was a girl. And I was just, yo, What? That was that I that was comedy. Peak comedy. Um thought the Lightning as a antagonist or like as a competitive antagonist was great. He had some great one liners. He is iconic. I like him a lot. Um I think again the show hits it's its stride at post merge, um, which is not surprising because again it can devote more time to focus on certain characters. But the characters that did focus, Zoe, Mike, and Cameron are, like, very lame. I, I don't know. I don't like them as, like, a friend group. And All Stars focuses a lot on them. And I just don't care about them. Like, when Mike's not going through his different personalities, he's boring. And Zoe's already boring. And I thought that was kind of the point, was that Zoe was going to be the normal one of this season. But, like, Mike... Mike's personality, like Mike without his personality is as bland as hell. And Cameron's also very bland. And like, I I don't know, I would have preferred it focus more. Like I like Scott trying to gain Zoe's trust. And then Scott, ha I, I don't think, I don't like him using the invincibility statue. And no, that's an entire other topic I need to touch on. Like Scott using the invincibility statue just to solely avoid elimination. And then Dakota being the one who gets eliminated. I feel like was very like suspect. I think that was like kind of underwhelming actually, because like we they built up the invincibility statue all season, because instead of it tw being twenty six episodes, they made this season and all subsequent seasons thirteen episodes, and that means an elimination every single round, no ifs ands or buts. 
except sometimes in All-Star they don't, but, like, and also sometimes in this they just make you change teams, which is really dumb in my opinion, but, like, whatever. Anyway, um, and to combat this, they hide an invincibility statue somewhere on this island, and I think that's a great idea. I think that's a great idea. I think that should have been done in the first three seasons, too. I think that's brilliant, and that's probably my singular favorite thing of the season is the invincibility statue. Because it's just, it brings so much variety. It brings another layer of, like, animosity to everything. It brings another layer of, like, oh, shit, what's happening? Because, like, in in Island, a moment that's noted is that, like, Heather kisses Trent. So, she, the only reason she wasn't voted off is because she had invincibility. But what if everybody voted for her say like thinking you know no like that she wasn't invincible but she pulls out the invincibility statue like that was kind of the moment i wanted that's kind of the moment we got in all stars which i kind of appreciated but in revenge of the island it just kind of felt like the invincibility totem like scott had it scott used it and like showed like hey i'm the only one you can trust like you can't trust mike that's for sure i almost would have preferred like um it going down to like her them getting voted off or in when he had to use the invincibility totem mike would have been voted off instead and then zoe had to be like oh mike like i would have had to deal with the fact that like she was part of the reason that mike was voted off and then in like grand chef auto or a challenge like that where you get to pick who's going home scott eliminates zoe kind of like betraying their trust on two levels but that's not what happened i don't care um, I thought that was great, but this episode, a lot of the challenges are wacky. I, I don't love the toxic waste idea at all. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of it. I think it creates some funny moments like Fang. Um, overall, this season is decent. And this is also, I think the first season where I disagree or I don't like my country's ending because every season has different endings, different, con like different, uh, countries vote on different endings. So different people win in different countries. Uh, like for me, Island Owen won, Action Duncan won, World Tour Heather won, and then for Revenge of the Island, I believe in my country, I didn't watch it, I don't think on original airing, uh, Cameron won. I don't like that at all. I think Lightning is a much more compelling character and a much cooler winner to have. And I just want to leave you with this quote said by Lightning to Cameron uh, during the finale, which was, you wanted an intellectual challenge. By the time I'm done with you, your whole life's going to be an intellectual challenge. That might be the singular best one-lighter in the entire series. That is incredible, and for that reason alone, Lightning should won. And now, we're kind of starting to touch the series I know nothing about, or not much about, so like, my analyses will be shorter, if, like, any, or, like, barely any content. All-Stars get C-tier. Hmm. Now, All-Stars is mid at best. All-Stars really is written by an entire new like group of writers, and you can tell. Every character was bastardized to their one trait, which is well, most of them are just being stupid. Um, there's not a lot of positives. The only positives you can really think of is that, like, oh my god, first gen and second gen are interacting together. But that's literally it. They're interacting. They're not even good interactions. The good interactions could have been between, like, Joe and Duncan and Joe and other people, except Joe got boarded off, like, third episode or something. You have Lindsay. Lindsay and Lightning could have been the dumb, like, power combo, except they both get voted off in the first two episodes. The... That's really dumb. Um, the concept, the team concept is really dumb. Heroes versus villains, I don't think is that good of a team My concept. I think it, could just, it should have just been random. Because that's like, that's varied. Having all of villains on one team and having all the heroes on another is like, that's fuck shit. Like, that's stupid. Obviously, the point was that like, there's all, like, there's a lot of, like, uh, team mixing going on through eliminations, and also, obviously, some of the heroes are villains, and some of the villains are heroes, vice versa. However, 
you could have avoided all the team switching because honestly, I would prefer reward challenges to just blatant team switching, which is really weird and also sets up a lot of people in uncharacteristic scenarios, which aren't like un like uncharacteristic and uninteresting scenarios, like Cameron being on the villains team and then like Duncan getting moved to the hero seems like, okay, that was okay, I would say. And like, I think that they could have embraced that more. I think that they could have, with Duncan being moved to the heroes team, I think that was a time for a character arc. And, like, it was to an extent. I think he could have just embraced it and just kind of handled it better. Instead of being like, oh my god, I'm losing my cool. Like, he could have just been like... It could have hearkened back to the season one moment where Lashana is like, who says we gotta be tough all the time? I think that could have really, it, like, it could have emphasized that. But instead, he blows up um, Chris's fucking mansion in um, Regatta Nothing or something, um, which gets him automatically eliminated, which is stupid as hell. That was a stupid character decision. And that's the, that's the theme of this season, is stupid character decisions and miss, like, uncharacteristic. Is that all the characters are butchered to some awful extent where like Duncan's obsessing over Courtney, Gwen's obsessing over Courtney because all she wants to do is be friends with Courtney again when she showed no interest in being friends with Courtney even when they were on good terms. And they're like, oh my god, like we have things in common, but that's it. That's it. That's literally all that like was said in World Tour and now like her entire personality is focused on being friends with Courtney. And like it's stupid. And Courtney's just like Courtney's the evolution started in action and it's been she's been on a negative slide the whole time where like <sighs> she's been on a negative slide the whole time to the point where she's she's just a straight up villain and she should have been considered a straight up villain by all stars and Scott was turned into dumb as a rock like I, I don't know Mal is an awful antagonist he's evil for the sake of evil and that's also what I'm going to say about Charlotte in the next season um, the finale is two Gen 2 characters instead of being one Gen 1 and one Gen 2. That's really stupid. It should have been an all-star season, and in you had one original character in the final four, and then you eliminated them, and I would say, again, the most compelling of the other, of the new characters in Scott. You had Scott, I viewed Scott as, like, this terms Duncan, where, like, he was bad. He was like, he was going to do things his way and he won. He was successful. He got to fourth in the first season and he got to third technically in the second season because Zoe got to choose. And like, because Zoe got to choose, obviously we say, or she saves Mike from Mal or whatever the fuck. Like Mal is a stupid idea and Mal and Mike, all of them should not have made it that far. I just, there's a not, there's a lot that's not going on right. And like Heather leaving behind the invincibility totem was ridiculous. Um, I don't know. This, this season hurt me a lot because it had a lot of potential, but instead it was just really bad. And like, I'll say like, this is genuinely like nothing related to the, the show's content, but Alejandro getting a new voice actor, like, how I think his last name was, like, House or something. That really sucked. Alejandro's voice actor in season three fit him perfectly. He was the right amount of suave and, like, just cultured. I think it was, like, Marco Grazzini or something, his name. Um, but he couldn't do Alejandro for season five. And that, that was, I think, the biggest L. Because Alejandro's voice is fucking annoying. Oh, my God. Um, it's just so different and it's like higher and like one year, which is, different, which is interesting or which was like an interesting choice, I guess, because Alejandro in season three was known for just being a smooth talking, like suave man. And just like, now you have a high pitched, like one year voice overall. And then obviously the one more thing is though, they're, they're, a lot of the characters that they chose, I thought were weird choices. Like for all stars, I would I was surprised that Sierra was there. I was surprised that like Lashana and Owen weren't there. I was surprised that Sam was there and Brick wasn't there. 
Um, I don't know. This this was a uh, this is the season of mixed potential or missed potential. There's not even mixed. It's just missed. Back to Islands and F tier. I'm not even going to spend that much time talking about it. Everything was really bad. Most of the characters were bad. Um, most of the challenges were bad or unexciting. I can barely remember the team's names, um, which is cool, I guess. The island. The island, I think, was one of the only interesting parts of it. I liked that it was a robotic island. I thought it was a weird change of pace. And I really found it funny when the island was not functioning. Everyone's like, Chris, what the fuck's going on? And he's like, I, I, I. And like, the trees are like fucking going up and down in the ground. And he's like, I don't know what you're talking about, Jasmine. Like, da 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 da. The only relatively okay characters, in my opinion, are the ones that basically made it the farthest Jasmine, Sean, um, Sky, Sugar. Those are decent characters. I actually enjoy Sugar as an antagonist. I find the pageant queen is really funny. She's really funny. Scott or Sugar's just funny, I guess. Like somewhat kind of. Um, Sean is fine, I guess. Uh, Dave, while being a hateable character, is an accurate representation of a trope that doesn't get a lot of talking about. Um, in like the nice guy that turns bad and everything. Um, everything else about this season sucked. Um, yeah, there's not much in-depth analysis here. I haven't watched it a lot for, like, further review because I genuinely don't want to watch it again. Like, I really did not enjoy watching this show, and I don't want to continue to watch it, or I don't want to re-watch it again and again. Um, as a villain, uh, Scarlet's really fucking dumb as a villain. Um, Amy and Sam, Amy as, like, just being a bitch to her twin, um, also dumb um leonard as a concept is kind of funny but like they took it to the extreme which is exactly what happened in all stars like they could have i think genuinely the best thing that could have happened to all stars and pocketeo island is just they axed pocketeo entirely and made all stars 14 characters i think 14 characters 26 episodes just make it the same format as the first three seasons, which all succeeded very well. You can still put your invincibility totem, and you can still have your fucking ravenous animals, but you have more develop and more time, more time for nuance to development. And instead of adding Mal as an antagonist, you could use characters who are already antagonistic and try to get them onto a, a higher level. You could use Duncan, who never really had a big role as an antagonist. You can use Lightning. Or if you want to use a villain, you can use, or if you want to use like a hero in quotes, you could use like Courtney, or you can use somebody else and really have them do an antagonist arc, even though Courtney already had the antagonistic arc in action. They could have used the 26 episode format purely for all stars in order to make, they could have also expanded the cast. I would say if they did 26 episodes, they could have expanded the cast by adding, for example, this is not a like, they could have like Owen on the the tier one or like the the first gen. They could have added Brick in the second gen if they added one. If they wanted to add even more, they could have added Noah to the first gen and like uh, Dawn to the second gen. Or they could have added Lashana to the first gen or Cody to the set of the first gen or even fucking Beth who is a finalist. Like, there's a lot of different avenues they could have gone and they didn't and they instead wanted to shoehorn Pocketeo Island in there, which was just, oh boy, that was really, really bad. And I really, like, don't want to watch it again. Like, it's, it's awful. It's F tier. Mm. Awful. And finally, the last one we're ranking. Redonkulous Race. It's B. It's a B tier. I, I just finished re-watching it somewhat, like, on and off. while I, Like, put it on while I go to sleep, see an episode or two here and there. Um. Like a couple days ago, it's pretty good. I'll I'll say that it's pretty damn good, honestly. Um, a lot of the pairings are interesting. I like the cadets. I love the ice dancers. The ice dancers are great. Jacques and Jose. I felt for Jacques in those last couple episodes where like Jose is just like pressuring him on and on and on. And he's just like Jose. I don't think like Jose. I don't think we can like win like this and like blah 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 blah. I like that. I like that he was kind of like conflicted about cheating because they just kept fucking getting penalized for it. Um, I like the cadets. I like the, the sisters. Great. I love Kitty. Kitty's amazing. Kitty's so adorable. 
Uh, Owen and Noah, great. The surfers are great. The goths are fucking hilarious, honestly. Um, the main antagonist, like the not the main antagonist, the main antagonist is great as the ice dancers. Um, I even like the, the stepbrothers, Chet and Lorenzo, my boys. They're cool. Um, I don't know. Like it, it was pretty good. I would say they're pretty good. Some of the challenges were a little bit whack. They had a lot of like a lot of um no elimination round, which is like that's fine by me, I guess. But like, they did a lot. What they did a lot of is they did a lot of um like giving a group or a character a ton of development and then eliminating them like immediately after. Which is like that sucks. I think like give them development like either make, give them like, a longer lasting arc or let us see how diff like better or differently they perform after their development arc is done. But uh, that's a that's more of a smaller nitpick. That's like more of the 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 the, um, the teams that get eliminated first, like the or like in the earlier half, like the Step Brothers and the Rockers. The Rockers are also great, I might add. Um, notice, oh, notice that like um, out of all the things I'm talking about, I'm not. I didn't mention uh, Devin and Carrie, who are like our main protagonists, and that's because I felt they were annoying. And, like, we were, I could tell that, like, a, a one of the many aims was to make us feel for um, Devin and Carrie. And I didn't. I didn't really care. I understood, like, their plight as besties. Like, that was cool. And I liked that, like, she was in love with him. But, like, it just kind of got annoying because there's only so much you can do with that. And to be reminded of it over and over. And then with him going through the breakup and then like him being really annoying and going through all the stages of grief and all that shit. Um, that was annoying. And then when he was like, Oh my God, I'm in love with her. And then spends like 90 years trying to like, I don't know, spending a long time, like, um, uh, spending too much time focusing on their love story when they could have focused on like, Nice, healthy relationships like Ennui and Crimson. And that's facts for you. Um, I don't know. I thought overall it was a good season. I, I liked a lot of the challenges. I liked that they went to a lot of different places that um, World Tour didn't go. Like they went to Vietnam and they went to um, Victoria Falls. And they let, they just went to a lot of different, more interesting places. But they also went to some of the similar places. Like they went to Paris, I believe. And they went to New York. And they hit similar um locations but they did different challenges and i liked that i liked um i don't know i liked the variety of transportation and like i liked interactions like i liked the father and son interacting with the surfers like i it, it gave because it's not only limited to like teens i quote because like that kind of got looser as the season the series went on it it had it left a lot more room for like interactions and like with, like, for example, Dwayne asking how um, he could be cooler to his son. And, like, his son, uh, Dwayne Jr., hitting on Carrie. Like, it left for some funny interactions. And Noah and Kitty are adore Or not Noah and Kitty. Noah and Emma are adorable. They are adorable. And I support it 100%. And that's all I have to say because, honestly, I don't remember too much of it like specifically like perfectly in depth i i mm, the hate the daters haters thing i think lasted a long time but i also found them funny and i also found ryan i think his name was really wholesome i thought that was great like him and Car like him and carrie were nice as friends for the two episodes they were i liked the axis of evil <laughs> i thought that was really funny um and i liked that when Carrie and Devin had to bring back a team that they brought back the surfers because of them their sacrifice in Vietnam, even though I think that was really dumb. And I think it could have just been like a way to eliminate, like that could have just been like a, a more natural way to eliminate the besties. But like, I get that they still have the, the, the love confession and everything. Um, That's about it though. And we've ranked all of the series of total drama to this point. From Island and World Tour being an S tier, Action being an A tier, Revenge of the Island and Redonkulous Race being in B tier, All Stars being a very generous C tier, 
and Pocketeo Island and Total Drama Rama being F tiers. I'm glad if you've stuck around for this hour, 14 minutes and 29 seconds, I thank you. And I really think that uh, you should subscribe to see more because I'd love to talk about Total Drama and sports and like other things. I game. I haven't streamed in a long time because, you know, college is hard, uh, but I might start eventually again. Um, like, I don't know, right now. Um, depends. Subscribe, stick around, and find out. Thank you so much for watching. It's been Just Crust, and it's been good, and I'm out.